Thank you so much for joining us today. This is our webinar for small business owners, and we call this the inconvenient truth about small business financing. My name is Kathy Heschlow, and I'm a partner with Synovus Financial. Terry Robinson is president, and our mission at Synovus is rebuilding the U.S. economy, one business and one loan at a time, and we focus on SBA loans as well as microloans for small businesses. We know time is a premium for every small business owner. We're going to get right to the point, and we're going to keep this webinar under 20 minutes. Many businesses, and perhaps this includes you, have had a hard time accessing capital or, or getting loans, especially since 2008. So our first inconvenient truth of small business financing is this. There are less and less smaller banks. Smaller banks are traditionally the ones that extend credit and give loans to small businesses. So this point is very important. You'll see here on the screen a chart from the Federal Reserve in Dallas. They did a, a study in February of this year of 2013, and they were looking at the trends. And in fact, you can see that for decades, there were smaller banks, stable numbers. Uh, but in the last decade or so, there has been an alarming trend where there are fewer and fewer banks and the banks that do exist are larger and larger and now traditionally the larger banks just don't extend as much credit to small businesses and we're going to show you more on the next slide okay so this chart was done by the new rules project and it just illustrates what we mentioned the small banks and the small mid-sized banks really do 80 85 percent of the small business loans and the large banks really have a smaller percentage. It varies between 14% and 18% uh, depending on the time frame or uh, the way you look at the statistics. The second inconvenient truth is that small banks are actually small businesses too and they're coming under the gun. There are new regulations that were aimed at and targeted at the big banks to keep another meltdown from occurring like what occurred in 2008. But in fact, these uh, regulations and these new rules are taking a big toll on the smaller banks. And then that translates to difficulties for you, for the small business owner not being able to obtain credit. So things like Dodd-Frank and Basel II include regulations, compliance requirements, and all kinds of things that are just becoming um, sort of an outrageous burden. And it's contributing to the factors that we saw in the previous slides about why there are less and less small banks and why there are uh, more difficulties. And just one more fact here, in the five years prior to the 2008 crisis, there were only 11 bank failures. After 2008 until 2011, there were 414 banks that failed, and you can be assured that most of them were small banks. The next inconvenient truth is that credit requirements are still strict, and this happens after a crisis, but it's rather overwhelming, and there's an added stress on small businesses. The amounts of down payment, of collateral requirements, of even credit scores are much tighter and makes it much more difficult to obtain a bank loan. The fourth inconvenient truth really relates to the big picture on small business, on the economy, and on jobs. The SBA, the Small Business Associate, or Administration, reports that 65% of all new jobs come from small business. Yet, if there's no credit, that means that there's little or no job creation, and in fact, there's little or no growth, and that creates a vicious circle with the economy. To elaborate on this just a bit more and why we at Synovus Financial feel that small business credit is, is essential, the U.S. Department of Commerce highlighted some facts. For small U.S. firms, 99.7% of businesses or firms are small business. Half employ private sector employees, 65% generate the net new jobs, and that's over the past 17 years. 
They create more than half of the non-farm private GDP, and small businesses make up 97 point, um, yes, 97.5% of all identified exporters, producing 31% of export value. And that particular number is from 2008. But nevertheless, small businesses are very important to the U.S. economy. The last inconvenient truth is that small businesses, in fact all businesses, need capital to thrive, capital to grow, for inventory, for equipment, to hire, and in this environment it's just tough to get that capital. Businesses can be profitable, a, a small business owner could be doing fine and they have cash flow, but they're unable to get credit so they can go to the next level. Others may have poor credit scores, they may have a ding on their credit, and they just can't get that loan, they just cannot get that access to capital. Um, some businesses are new since 2008 and they just have not found a way to build credit history which works against them when they want to try to get a loan. So what is our solution at Synovus Financial? Fast, non-bank, microloans for small businesses. The first thing to understand about microloans is that the underwriting emphasizes the business cash flow and the ability to repay this loan. Not credit scores, not collateral, there are no down payments. It's just a different way of looking at loans and a different way of structuring loans than a typical bank approach. These are short-term loans. The terms are between four months and 18 months, and I think the average is probably seven or eight months for these loans. The uh, amounts are between $5,000 and $150,000. It could go higher in some cases, for instance, if a business has several sites, like several restaurants or several franchisee sites. As mentioned, there are no collateral requirements and no down payments. Not every industry qualifies, but, but a wide array does, and we will have a list of the disqualified industries or the restricted industries that you can check after the webinar, that you can click through. In general, the most ideal industries are those that have a daily clientele, daily cash flow, uh, perhaps a restaurant or a bar, a doctor, a dentist, a vet, a retail store, a perhaps an auto repair store. Um, it doesn't mean that these are the only kinds of industries that work, but the underwriters do favor a continual and ongoing kind of cash flow because that is really suited for the structure of a cash flow loan. Very different from a bank loan, this process is quite streamlined. There's a one-page application and you're required to submit the last four months of your bank statement and if you take credit cards in your business, your merchant credit report and that's it. In some cases, some businesses, if they're seasonal or if there's some reason, may want to submit more than four months or there may be other requirements asked for by the underwriters, but for the majority of the applicants, that is it. Also, very different from a bank loan, you will have an offer in uh, normally in two to four days after you submit that one page application and your bank statements. And once you go over the offer with the underwriters, you could close as quickly as seven to 10 days later. The whole process moves quickly. We understand that small businesses need capital. They need to get on with their business and they don't need to waste time waiting, uh, filling out forms and waiting for a month or two to see if they're going to get capital. Interest rates are definitely higher than bank loans. Uh, the micro loan interest rates will take off where the bank loans leave off. And don't forget these are alternative short term loans. The underwriters will help you evaluate the total cost. How long is the loan? What is the payback? What is your daily, um, you know, your daily cash flow? What is the use for? And remember, the most ideal use for the micro loans are to use money to make money. That is to add something to the bottom line of your business, uh, use the funds for something that will help you grow. Perhaps that is discounted inventory that you mark up and you sell. 
Perhaps that is adding some tables at a restaurant or adding bar, a bar at a restaurant. Perhaps that is adding some equipment in your practice that will then allow you to charge more and bring uh, serve more clients. It could even be ideal for a business who has so much a daily business and not enough people to handle it, if they hired someone, it could actually bring more money to the bottom line of their business. So again, the total cost is what is important and that is what the underwriters will help you assess. So the, the payback is also streamlined on the, the microloans from Synovus. Typically there will be a daily ACH that is um, in the offer from underwriting and this is typically a very small percentage of your daily cash flow. So you can see why understanding your cash flow and having a, a, a typically cash flow business is a good fit for this kind of loan. Um, the daily ACH is a very easy set it and forget it kind of payback that will help you, the small business owner, not have to think of one more thing to do or, or miss that, that uh, monthly payment or, or whatever it would be. Now, another point is that most of the small businesses who take a micro loan will do a renewal, two, three, or even more renewals, and that will help the small business owner gain more capital, especially if, if the, the initial amount is not really what they were hoping for, but is what um, is available with the underwriters, that would allow the small businesses to access that capital over time. And again, these are short-term loans, so that can actually work out to your favor. The most basic requirements for a small business to qualify for the microloan, the business must be located in the United States or Puerto Rico. You have to have been in operation for at least one year minimum, and the annual revenue should be at least 100,000. Now, the, there will be a higher probability of approval by the underwriters if your annual revenue is at 180,000 or more, but the absolute bottom threshold of that revenue is 100,000. Now, the minimum FICO score is 500, and 90% of Americans have at least that 500 score. Now, obviously, the higher your credit score, the better the terms and the better the underwriting, but the point here is that many business, I'm sorry, many banks will not even consider an application unless you have a, a high credit score. And so this opens a window of opportunity for those small business owners who may have a, a lower credit score. And that might have occurred after 08 when perhaps you had a foreclosure or you uh, had to run up some credit cards for your business or whatever. So this just gives you a possibility of qualifying for a microloan. The underwriters will look at minimum bank balances and monthly deposits. They don't like when there are negative bank balances or when there's an inconsistent bank balance, but obviously they'll be looking at those um, uh, at those bank statements and at your daily cash flow. And then there will be other things they will underwrite for. Yes, you can have a bankruptcy or foreclosure in your past, but it has to be uh, four years or more in general. Uh, you cannot have a current tax lien unless it's something small that can be paid off. There are many other details like that, but um, the, the main point here is that these are non-bank loans that are emphasizing cash flow and may have uh, different kinds of standards than a bank loan. Okay, well, we promised to keep this on point, to keep this webinar to uh, the basics. We know that your time is valuable, and we hope that you have enjoyed learning a little bit more about the microloans. We uh, appreciate your attention and your participation. On the next slide, we will have a link through to our website for a bit more information. And uh, if you want to give us a call after the webinar or leave us a message, we would be very happy to talk to you. Thank you.